Boa tarde, everyone. My name is Ian McKee, um, and I'm representing Copa Verde, the plan and the movement in Brazil. Um, I am Brazilian, and uh, as you just heard, this is a really exciting time um, for our country. But first, I'd like to share with you a small part of a study carried out by our team before the World Cup was awarded to Brazil. I invite you to go back with me to 2007 and journey through a typical stadium at that time. This is your seat, seat 142. <laughs> now, understandably, you're not too happy uh, with this seat, so you request something a bit more comfortable. Hmm, not much of a view, is this? So you upgrade to, this looks nice, when you realize the extra space was made for larger individuals. But you ask yourself, does a seat actually match the space provided? So a little confused, you decide to go to the restroom when, whoa, you have to dodge a column and you turn the corner and gentlemen, I don't know if you've ever experienced something like this, but imagine 30 men in this space, <laughs> back to back, with no room to get through, and when you actually get to doing your business, you just pray that somebody doesn't push you from behind, because where are you going to put your hands? Where are you going to put your hands? And ladies, ladies, it doesn't get any better. So now with blood pumping through your veins, you decide you're going to run out and demonstrate to the world your frustration when you confront, is that a moat? <laughs> this is a field irrigation pipe that didn't get designed under the moat, and of course it became a bridge for fans to access the field, uh, which then required another medieval solution. <laughs> the results of this stadium study were published the day after the World Cup was awarded to Brazil, and it shocked the world, including many Brazilians. It became clear that Brazil needed to think big. So our team looked at some of the more important stadiums of the world, and we noticed the bird's nest in China uh, for the 2008 Beijing Olympics had many efficient technologies, but it also had a facade that didn't match. It used an immense amount of steel, which serves little functional purpose. Germany in the 2006 World Cup innovated through the development of a citywide recycling program in Munich. South Africa uh, introduced great water efficiency measures because of their dry climate. In Brazil, in today's time, calls for something much bigger. So Vicente Castromelo and I decided to get together back in 2008, and we wrote the Copa Verde plan for Brazil and we invited all of the stadium architects to, be, to build LEED certified eco arenas as part of what we believed could become the largest green building effort to date, a competition across 12 host cities. The effort included not just the arenas, but all the principal infrastructure projects for city, airports, hotels, hospitals, all LEED certified and all tied to existing or new public transport. Today, we have nine of the 12 World Cup City Stadiums registered with LEED. And for the project we're involved in, in the nation's capital, Brasilia, we conceptualize the design specifically with a local climate in mind. Brasilia is very warm, but dry. So in the shade, it is cool. So our, our team designed a uh, breathable facade with a setback structure under a large white roof. The high solar incidence led us to create enough space on the roof to lay a meaningful 2.544 megawatt solar array for improved energy efficiency. We hope it can become the first lead platinum stadium in, the, in a major global sporting event. This is our eco, eco arena proposal, a place where people can come together around the sport they leave, they love, excuse me, and leave changed. It is a seed at the center of a future green city, a stage where the competition for a better future can begin a competition that is local and global, but where ultimately everyone wins. We call this competition Copa Verde. Thank you.